Hello, welcome to the Leaders Room. I'm Ali Zakri Alias from the ITLIF Leadership and Governance Center. This morning, we have with us Dr. Chu Yuan Mei, who is the Director General of the Malaysian Palm Oil Board. Dato is recognized internationally for her pioneering work in the field of palm biofuels and novel, efficient, and green processes for the palm-based industry. One process that has been successfully commercialized is the carotene-rich red palm oil with the trade name of Carotino. Dato has authored and co-authored more than 835 scholarly articles and holds over 57 patents. Dato has also been honoured with more than 100 international and national scientific and invention awards, the most prestigious of which include the Knight of the International Order of Merit of Inventors. Dato, welcome to the Leaders' Room and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Dato, uh, if you could share with us your career history on how a scientist like you, uh, and who holds so many patents and, and who has authored so many papers, has become one of the handful of female director generals in Malaysia. Well, um, I started as a lecturer in UGC Science Malaysia and I returned from overseas with my master's degree. So that was um, 1980 to 1982. So after that, I felt that because during that time, um, oil palm industry um, is in its infancy state, is beginning, it's a new industry. I feel that I can contribute more uh, to a new industry. That's why I transferred, asked for a transfer and go to uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Board. At that time, it was Palm Oil Research Institute of Malaysia. I was just a scientist and uh, moving from, uh, um, you know, from uh, very ground work, doing my research in the lab. That was the time that uh, I was being mentored, uh, learning, and then it comes a time when I move up as um, as a group leader of a specific group. Um, I'm a chemist myself. So uh, during that time, I learned to be more independent, guide the, uh, give idea to the young scientists. And then uh, moving from there um, as a head and division uh, director and eventually to what I am today. In that respect, I have to say that I'm grateful to my management giving me an opportunity <laughs> to, to move to this level. Dato, did you ever see yourself as a leader first rather than a scientist? Or did, the, did you becoming a leader was something like an accident, if, if, if I may say so? Uh, well, I see myself actually as a scientist. I never, um, uh, to be frank, I uh, uh, have never thought that I would become a director general. Mm -hmm. So I'm very committed, I work very hard because I'm very interested in R&D, mm -hmm. so I'm a scientist, but it came an opportunity in the late 1990s when my management sent me to do an MBA um, with Asia Institute of Management. Yes. So that sort of broadened up my uh, uh, horizon. So that, um, that course really helped me a lot, how to uh, create, uh, how to be, uh, uh, how, how to master all these management skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, develop leadership qualities. Uh, of course, as a scientist, I do lead scientific team. Yes. But then, uh, giving such an opportunity, uh, the trust and the faith that have been given to me by Minister and the oil palm industry, they moved me up to this level. Yes. So um, it gave me the opportunity to contribute more. So, do you think being a scientist gives you an edge in, in the palm oil industry? I should think so, especially in Malaysian Palm Oil Board, because basically 70 to 80 percent of the MPOB, Malaysian mm. Palm Oil Board activity, is still R and D. Mm. So, being a scientist um, with a technical background, it helps me. But having said that, leadership to acquire leadership mm. qualities as well as management skills, these are also very essential. Yes. Yes. Did you see any? Um, practices or disciplines in the sciences that help you in becoming the leader that you are and do you think there are some of those lessons that could actually be learned by other leaders even in other non-scientific or R&D heavy industries and companies? I have to be very committed, interested, passionate mm. what you want to do mm. and must be very professional, mm. uphold integrity 
because I believe that uh, excellence, science, and uh, ethics, they are not um, uh, mutual. There's no mutual exclusivity yes. of these two. Yes. They must be together. Yes. Science must be guided by ethics. So I yes. believe in that. So yes. um, this sort of quality, yes. uh, commitment, and also as a scientist, you have to attend to every detail. Yes. You, must you must produce scientific data, yes. credible scientific data. Yes. So, so uphold professionalism and integrity is very important. It's very interesting that you mentioned about science and ethics and integrity. Because most people think that science is very black and white, it's very cold, it's very analytical. There's no human aspect to it. What are your thoughts on that? And do you think that, uh, you know, does it apply to leadership, which is much more, how people would say, much more softer, much more human, which is not so much aligned towards the sciences? Uh, yes, as I said, um, uh, Excellence in science must be guided by ethics. Yes. So I always, um, uh, uh, you know, put uh, always uh, in my meeting with my uh, officers at the professional meeting, always tell them, and uh, we should also uphold integrity. Yes. So I feel these are very, very important, yes. and that could be put in every day's uh, life as yes. a leader, yes. wherever you are, whichever field you are. Yes. Yes. Dato, how do you deal with, um, uh, you know, in the industry of palm oil, uh, it's very competitive and there's a lot of uh, anti-palm oil campaigns which sometimes uses, uh, for lack of a better word, not really ethical means of uh, promoting anti-palm oil uh, messages. What are your thoughts on that and how do you think that we in Malaysia should counter that while maintaining our integrity and our ethics? I always believe credible scientific data will prevail. Mm. The credible scientific data will speak for by, by itself. Mm. So, uh, so as a R&D organization, MPOB, we should collect, we should do um, a credible R&D and collect credible R&D data. And we can use this to promote palm oil, to mm. educate people based on science, based on facts. Mm. So this is this to me is very very important. Mm. So uh, when I became director general, I did formulate uh, ten strategic R and D strategies yes. and twelve non research uh, uh, research strategies yes. to uh, address all these concern issue challenges of the palm oil industry, yes. including all these palm oil uh, anti palm oil campaigns. Yes. So these strategies cover the whole value chain from upstream, midstream, and downstream. Yes. And we regularly uh, monitor the progress. This I actually am Malaysian Palm Oil Board, our KPI. Yes. And we want to deliver what we promise. Yes. So um, I feel that with uh, uh, credible scientific data, uh, we would be able to tell the world that uh, um, some of these anti-palm oil campaign mm. actually uh, is on no basis. Do you feel like using this hard data uh, would be able to bridge the emotional gap sometimes? Because humans being human, sometimes we are much more excited by uh, you know, the, the much more glamorous aspect and much more controversial. How do you counter that constantly with just cold data? Um, we have to keep educating people, uh, bring them to believe that that is facts. Yes. That is, uh, you know, based on science. Yes. It's not something that uh, um, it come out of yes. the blue or whatever. Yes. So I think patients mm. that continuous uh, promotion mm. create awareness. Mm. Um, have to really bring them over to our side mm. to believe that this is correct. Mm. That's why this is very very important. Mm. In your organization itself, do you use the same strategy in dealing with your people, especially with difficult people who are, you know, when it comes to people issues, it's very emotionally based. How do you manage that? Do you, do you use your scientific, very data-driven um, approach or do you activate a different lever? I do motivate my staff. I incentivize them uh, to give their best. Mm. That's why when I became Came director general. Um, 
I told myself I want to create a conducive environment mm. for the for my people to work there. Mm. Conducive environment means a caring mm. environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, the human factor is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you take care of your staff, uh, you really uh, put a reward system for them. Mm. They will really will we will be able to bring up their best. Mm. We would uh, motivate them to uh, contribute even better. Right. I always believe because nobody is perfect. Everyone has his strength and uh, weakness. Yes. So I try my best to bring up the strength of all these uh, uh, yes. the employees. Yes. And uh, for the weakness, we think of a way to help to um, uh, uh, see how we could uh, uh, help them to overcome the weakness. Yes. So I've been uh, trying to use the approach. Yes. And also I try my best to create an ecosystem to promote creativity and innovation. Interesting, yes. Yes, because um, I feel that, uh, as I say, everybody has their strength and weakness. Yes. And there are a lot of hidden talent. It's for us to discover all this hidden yes. talent. Yes. So we have to motivate them. Actually, we can take a personal, uh, more personalized approach, mm. talk to them, mm. and then you'll find that you'll discover a lot mm. in them that they can contribute. Mm -hmm. Dato, you know you mentioned earlier on that 70% of MPOB is actually research yes. uh, based, right? Would you say that the environment, the conducive environment that you're creating uh, would be much more skewed towards scientist space? Or is there something which is quite common which you say actually it applies to everybody, it's not just for scientists? Are there differences and commonalities between scientists and non-scientists in this in your organization? Uh, our organization, besides R&D, we do provide services, such as um, we are also looking at licenses, yes. issuing certain types of license, yes. and as well as enforcement activities. Yes. So uh, we also uh, provide statistical data for the palm oil, the palm oil performance, the palm oil industry, uh, for the palm oil industry. So, um, uh, whatever I introduce, I believe it's not just for the scientists. Mm. It means for other non-researchers as well. Mm. Uh, conducive environment, caring uh, environment, it cut across the board, mm. be it uh, whether yeah. you are scientists scientist or, or non-scientists. Yes. I find once they feel that this is the place for them, yeah. there is a, you know, um, the management is caring for them, yes. they'll do their very, very best. And yes. I would like them to bring up whatever they are not happy. I rather uh, want them to talk to me or let us know what mm. they are not happy with mm. so that we can improve on it or we can do our best to do whatever instead of, um, you know, um, the, uh, there's a fear that, that they, they won't bring it up but yes. uh, actually um, quietly that uh, they may not be happy or satisfied. Yes. So yes. I believe in all this. I believe that if everybody is happy, then um, then they will perform. Excellent. That's Wonderful. my belief. Excellent. That too, in the palm oil industry, it's not known to be a very sexy industry or something which is, um, you know, in in your face and always on the, the front of the news. How do you attract and retain talent, especially the young people? How do you bring them into the palm oil industry and what are your thoughts on the future of, of talents within this industry? Um, within MPOB, I create a reward system. Uh, reward recognize those who um, perform mm. uh, promotion or we have various awards, scientific awards, mm. excellence service award and other awards in place. So um, this is something that I feel um, you know, um, to, to show that uh, the management do appreciate what right. they do. Right. And also in uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Board, um, we also encourage all these staff to participate at national and international level for competition and conferences. Mm. So we encourage them to do that. Just like some of the uh, invention or scientific competitions, when they participate, I told them winning it's not important. Important is the spirit. Participate, learn from others, and then uh, even if we fail, uh, not to worry. The fear of 
uh, failure uh, uh, is actually the impediment to success. Mm, so we mm, must mm, overcome mm. all those, learn from the failure and move on. Mm. Now, having said that, now we, do, we also have uh, uh, some system in place in MPOB. Mm. We do have um, what we call some uh, graduate uh, student assistantship. Yes. We do bring in uh, youngsters who want to, I mean those graduates who want to do higher degrees. Yes. We give them some stu uh, study so that yes. they are exposed to palm oil industry. Yes. PhD or master yes. and also during vacation time any university institution if they would like to um, the, to, 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 to send the students for yes. short-term training we do bring them uh, accommodate them yes. so that by doing so let them feel for themselves actually palm oil industry yes. is something very interesting yes. there are a lot more things to be discovered yes. there are a lot more problems to be solved <laughs> because I always believe one thing will lead to another. Lead to another yes. So we yeah. do um, try to create something like that. Yes. Um, at the same time, we do conduct some training courses, yes. even for Form 5 uh, school leavers, some training courses. This is more really in the field, huh? mm. uh, mm -hmm. those uh, skilled workers yes. and all that. Yes. We do have that uh, yes. program, yes. and this also under the, our ministry, mm. such a program. Yes. So we would like them to come in and experience for themselves. But I also agree that uh, must uh, give them uh, <laughs> uh, whatever support, they support, need. support, yes, support yes. and reward. Yes. yes. Dato, I love that statement which you just made. You know, fear is an impediment to success. This, it sounds like you've, you've gone through some interesting experiences to have come up with, with, with this uh, revelation. Could you share with us some, what, what were the, some of your stories that, you know, where you saw that fear is an impediment of, of success? Yeah, fear is the impediment of success, or fear of, sus, uh, fear of fear, Fa uh, yes, fear yeah. of fear, failure, failure. Uh, is the impediment to success. Yes. Um, um, well, uh, in life, Yes. Uh, it's not that all the time is smooth sailing, so they'll be up and down. So yes. not to be afraid of, please do not be afraid of failure. Yes. We must learn from the failure. Yes. So um, such as if you ask me to relate an example, uh, years ago when, when I was still really spending time in the lab, yes. laboratory, as a scientist, so um, there was such a reaction I was supposed to do to achieve certain things, yes. to get a product. But instead of that product A, I end up uh, getting something else. Yes. So to me, or to maybe my superior, may think that, oh, you have not achieved what I asked you to do, a specific objective. Yes. But uh, okay, you can think that that may be a failure, but I keep trying. So eventually I get the product. Yes. Uh, perseverance. Uh, 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 patience yes. and a lot of commitment, a lot of hard work and also knowledge to me I feel is very important. Yes. You must be very well versed in that area. Yes. Now, besides that eventually, that I never give up, huh? yes. try again, so eventually we achieve that. But on the other hand, because of uh, from product A, uh, some, through some scientific research, we end up with another product, yes. product B. Yes. Actually, it's a new discovery. Yes. So, uh, to me, um, I feel that... Uh, that, is, that is very refreshing because a lot of organisations, they don't reward failure in that sense. I suppose, is, that like, is it a mindset view that you must be ready to embrace failure, which might actually lead to change? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Uh, I, I agree with you on that, you know. not not. Never give up. Yes. Keep trying. Yes. And then one day you will be there. So yes. that's you know, reading like you have 800 over papers that you have published and you have over so many patents. How, how many failures did you have to go through before you came up with those number of patents? Because we always celebrate success, but we always sometimes forget so like what you just said. There are, we need to go through failure in order to get to success. What, what are some of the background on that? Uh, I'm not alone. I have to acknowledge that I have the support from my management yes. and also support uh, cooperation from all my uh, uh, my colleagues yes. that work together with me and yes. my supporting staff as well. Yes. So I believe in teamwork. 
Mm. I find that unity is strength and mm. teamwork is also mm. is a, you know, it's a strength mm. that we can put things together. Mm. We can share ideas and we mm. can uh, uh, also achieve our goals together. Mm. So we work together. Mm. So um, just now you mentioned about uh, fear, <laughs> fear of failure and, uh -huh. and how failure leads can also lead to success. Yes. yes. Um, in science especially, yes. I've, through my years of experience, it's not that everything you do one time, first time, you will get, you're lucky, you're lucky that mm. um, uh, if uh, just by one experiment you may achieve what we want. But many a times, you have to do many, many times to repeat it. Yes. So um, I remember another incident that uh, we were trying to, this is maybe a little bit scientific now, <laughs> we were trying to, to come up with uh, uh, biodiesel, yes. methyl esters, yes. but not using the chemical, chemical approach, yes. but using the enzymatic approach, okay. because enzyme is known to be, uh, it, it, can, it can be deactivated by heat, by solvent, yes. depending on the, uh, you know, the enzyme, but they can withstand heat. Yes. And, um, in order to convert palm oil to palm oil disemidized yes. esters, we need to introduce what we call methanol, and methanol is used to uh, activate act deactivate. Yes. But through our, we never succeed. Oh, okay. Uh, for many, uh, initially, okay. uh, uh, we try for a few months, huh? Yes. Because it's all the enzyme always deactivated. Enzyme is like a catalyst yes. to, to to convert the yes. uh, the starting material to the Final products, yes. but eventually, because through our never give up never, attitude, yes. we try and try again with various approaches. Eventually, there was one time overnight we find that suddenly we get the products, and then we don't believe it. Huh? <laughs> Once we get it, we repeat again, yes. repeat many times yes. until uh, it leads to yes. some of this patent filing. Yes, yes. Thought, you know you just mentioned just now, um, never give up. But sometimes, if you have so many failures, how do you keep on motivating your team to keep and not even knowing that you might get successful? And when do you know when to stop? <laughs> um, of course, eventually, uh, we, we can look at it from another approach. Yeah. We must analyze what is the problem. Yeah. Uh, when you feel there must be a reason okay. whether certain thing is not right or um, you know you have to put in more things and mm. all that so maybe we can put that aside for the time being mm. if we can't uh, find a solution mm. but we can revisit it later mm. when maybe there's um, some uh, advancement in sizes mm. maybe new approaches mm. have come uh, uh, that can uh, that uh, introduced in other industry maybe can use that to, uh, to, to look at it again. Mm. So now the failure part of it, we can leave it there if after trying for a while, uh, uh, from my experience, but we can always revisit it later. Interesting. Okay. And then uh, using different approaches okay. because science advances, so you can uh, bring in more new technology or mm. no, new innovation, or we can even bring in other people from other fields, mm. other areas to look at it collectively. Would you use this approach in managing your people? Do you also have this never give up attitude with your people? I feel so, because I always like to take up challenge <laughs> and uh, I feel that is something interesting. Um, we can try to motivate a person yes. using this approach, approach A. If feeling that, we can look at it another approach. Yes. Um, I feel that with your caring attitude, people will be touched and they will change. Mm. How was your journey through your leadership um, experiences? Was it through like what you just said? A lot of trial and errors, never give up, just something might come out of, of, of it. Or did you go through a lot of, you know, books and <laughs> uh, formulas in, in your leadership approach? Uh, I do read. I like reading. So um, leadership, uh, how to motivate different people, different yes. types of people, difficult people, and yes. so forth. But having said all this, I also must admit, there are a lot, my colleagues, my staff, they are also um, 
very, um, I mean, they themselves are easy to work with. Ah, you know? okay. So they're also groups like that. No? Yes. So very receptive to what you want, yes. um, do their best, yes. and no need to really push very hard. <laughs> they themselves are performing. <laughs> so, but people are different. That's how it make life yes. interesting, make yes. uh, you know, life interesting, yes. Is there any particular um, leadership theory that you have developed through using your scientific methodology that you know through your experiences? Leadership qualities to me have to be very fair to your staff. Okay. Fair, but must be firm. Ah. Firm with what you fair want to firm. do. Fair yes. and firm. Must be transparent. Yes. So that they feel that they are part of the system, part of the yeah, yes. part of the team. Yes. Um, uh, commitment is very important. Yes. Must be committed to do their best. They yes. must try their best. Yes. So I feel that if they try the best, they feel that's okay. Yes. But if they feel without trying the best, um, it's mm. something I feel that they mm. should improve. Mm. Uh, other leadership qualities, such as, uh, of course, we have to be very responsible, responsibility, responsible, mm. uh, uphold integrity, mm. professionalism mm. is very important. Mm. Whatever I do, I always talk to mm. my um, colleague staff that mm. we must be very professional mm. uh, in whatever we do. So that you need to, uh, then only you can uh, gain respect. But mm. we also must respect each other, mm. must respect other people. Mm. Yes. Doctor, in the scientific environment, um, normally success is credited to the lead researcher. So for, uh, you know, maybe the theory is named after the person or whatever. How do you manage that, you know, if from a teamwork environment when there's so many people and so much resources committed and only one person is perceived as the, as the one who receives all the, the recognition. What's your thoughts on that, Dr? That's why we created awards that is team-based. Mm. So if that um, project is successful and we reward the team, so everybody will be there mm. receiving the award recognition. But uh, in the scientific, publication journal, you are right, there's a lead author, there are co-authors. Yes. So um, we encourage the staff, uh, the whole team, whoever have contributed, they can uh, let us know uh, what um, in that particular area of project, mm. uh, what aspect mm. that they have been contributing, mm. um, maybe in terms of uh, just uh, um, a certain percentage of the mm. time and all mm. that. Mm. But when we reward, we want to reward the whole team. Mm. But mm. of course, we at times also, I mean, we also reward individuals Individual, that really yes. show excellence in science or excellent in whatever services they do yes. or uh, excellent in uh, leadership leading the scientific team. Yes. So we want to make, um, uh, ensure that the whole team is uh, rewarded, whole team is uh, appreciated. Mm, exactly. Yes. Dato, you are known to clock in over 15 to 16 hour days. What powers you and what energizes you to keep on doing this very punishing uh, <laughs> regime? And, um, and what, how can we also learn from, from you in that? Is that something which is a requirement? Well, I, I should say it's palm oil. <laughs> palm all powers you. Uh, power, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, since I'm already in this uh, area for more than 30 years, yes. I want to do my very, very best to contribute to the Malaysian palm oil industry, to the nation. So uh, it's always the love, the passion that I have mm. for palm oil, palm oil industry mm. that really energize me. Mm. And also, I must say that I've got a good team of uh, all my colleagues are uh, working together with me. Mm. So we keep sharing our ideas and uh, try to achieve our common goal. Mm. So that also motivate me, mm. act, uh, energize me. Mm. And also I feel that it's very satisfying that um, uh, our research from bench can, 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 can uh, reach the marketplace, commercialization. Mm. Mm. So that motivate me as well, energize me to go on. Uh, of course, uh, I do have uh, time like uh, playing music, listening to music, yes, yes. Uh, have a change, have yes. a break so that when I move back to my work 
uh, be fully energized. Yes. So I also uh, participate, involved in some of the societies, yes. like Malaysia Invention and Design Society, yes. and Malaysia Oil Scientists and Technologies Association. I'm the council members. Yes. So I do, uh, uh, you know, I find all those intellectual uh, uh, interaction yes. also en energize me a lot. Yes. Do you find that your team members are able to keep up with you? I think they're trying their very, very best. Uh, they're, they're trying their very best. I can see that. Yes. Uh, they work hard. They yes. do their best. Yes. So um, I, I think I'm happy that we have a good team there. So do you believe uh, there is, you know, the, the, um, there is the saying that there's no such thing as work-life balance because actually it's, there's, 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 you cannot really differentiate the two. What are your thoughts on that? I have to say I work a very tight schedule, so don't really have much of my personal time. But I believe in time management. Mm. As a leader, you must know how to manage your time. So, uh, so I plan everything properly. I also believe that there must be a balance uh, between work and family and mm. also friends. Mm. So uh, while working hard, committed, doing my best to whatever I have to do, um, you know, uh, we shouldn't uh, also uh, at the expense of family or friends as yes, well. Yes. yes, I find time management. Time management is very, very important. Yes. How you manage your time. Yes. Now, what are the qualities through your experience that is needed to make it to the top of the civil service? Well, uh, commitment. Committed to whatever you are doing. Yes. Very professional. Um, must uphold integrity, of course work hard, yes. um, leadership, <laughs> uh, fair, firm, um, also um, must be able to listen to your um, colleagues or your subordinates. Mm. Uh, a good leader must be also a good follower. Huh? Yes. 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 So must listen to them as well so that uh, you can uh, formulate better mm. in your strategy mm. after bringing in their views. Mm. So, of course, strategic thinking is also very important as mm. a leader. Mm. Visionary, strategic, mm. very strategic. Um, so all these are some of the points that I feel mm. to, to make uh, right. uh, a leader. But as one of, uh, as we've stated earlier, you're one of the very few female DGs in Malaysia. What were the qualities as, uh, as a lady uh, and as a female to have made it to the top in the civil service? Uh, were there any challenges, issues, strengths that you were able to bring in through your gender? Um, in our present system, current working system, um, a scientist or anyone um, that perform would be given an opportunity to be the leader, group leader and so forth. So I'm no exception that uh, um, I started as a scientist and group leader and move mm. it up. But I must say that I'm very fortunate that uh, um, some of this, my scientific uh, uh, contribution, scientific uh, efforts have really uh, uh, put me in uh, what I am today. Yes. So I have to say that I'm uh, uh, grateful on that yes. with the uh, recognition given and trust given to me. Yes. But uh, I also believe that um, commitment, work very, very hard, try my very, very best yes. uh, uh, to do whatever I'm given um, that also help because um, my principle is that once I'm committed in doing something, we like to do it well, yes. do it properly, yes. do it with, uh, you know, uh, do it uh, uh, with um, professionalism and so forth. Yes. So I never give up. But um, if I'm given a task, I feel that uh, I'm not be able to handle it or do it well, or I may not have so much time for it. I rather recommend somebody else to yes. do it. But uh, once I take it on, I will really do my very best. Yes. No matter how difficult it is, no matter that it's a challenge. Yes. Because I always believe that um, 
we can always uh, come up with some solution to overcome the uh, problems or challenges. Yes. yes. The palm oil industry is known to be very macho. You know, it's filled with, you know, with men who are rough and tough to go out there. How did you manage to handle all this, this, this men to accept you as a leader, not only in uh, the palm oil industry and as a scientist, but also to represent the whole industry? How, how did you manage to, to convince them? As I said, um, somehow I feel I'm fortunate wherever I have met with, they are all you know, nice people. <laughs> um, you respect people, people will respect you. Yes. So um, um, mm. always listen to them, mm. uh, uh, really show that uh, you are part of them. Let's say the palm oil industry. Mm. Huh? So that's why in uh, uh, Malaysian Palm Oil Board, when I um, uh, assume this position, I also create uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, interaction with the palm oil industry, yes. be it upstream, midstream, downstream. Yes. Uh, bring them together, interact with them, what they would really like and POP to do, so that uh, we can serve them better. So we listen to them. Okay. And then once we have results, we share with them. So we work together as mm. a team. That's why when you say um, it's, uh, well, the industry is uh, uh, maybe uh, still male quite male-dominated, yes, yeah. but somehow I feel that uh, uh, so far um, everything seems to be okay. You think this industry is going to be exciting for, the, uh, for females to join? So far there are quite a lot of stuff in MPOB yes. as female. Ah, okay. I have to say that, um, but uh, I trust that in the field, yes. the field yeah. will somehow maybe is still male yes. dominated. Yes. But I believe that whatever male can do, female also can do equally well or even better. Yeah. So <laughs> commitment is very important. Yes. Just like years ago, you yes. see that in medical field, engineering field, there's a lot of uh, um, male students, but now I see um, quite a lot of females also going into those areas. Yes. So palm oil industry in the R and D in some of the sector, even engineers, I find there are also quite a lot of female uh, um, mm. um, uh, employees, employees there. Yes. 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 Doctor, what would you advise fathers to say to their daughters, you know, when they are about? to embark on their industry, uh, into their career, or even if they want to go into the civil service or, or any, what, what advice would you want to see fathers give their daughters? If I were the fathers, <laughs> I would um, leave, to, leave all these things to them. I would let them do what they would like to do. That means if if their career, if they, are, they would like to become a whatever profession no, they are, uh, they want to be, so let them be. It, because interest is most important. Mm. But um, whatever they do, the most important thing is that whatever they do, they must be very committed and do well. Mm. Because I believe that wherever, whatever, wherever we are, we can contribute equally to the society. So if you ask me, I would leave it to them to choose their own career, what they would like to be in for their future, because it's going to be for the rest of their life that if they go into that career. So let them choose what they like to do, their interests. And normally, usually, and very often, if you choose the line that you are interested you can enjoy and you can even perform better. But yes. most importantly is must do things responsibly, do it properly and uh, uh, uphold all this uh, integrity. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Dato. I'm Ali Zakri Alias and I'm signing off for The Leaders Room. Thank you.